It's time to talk about marriage, and Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati is giving some incredibly amazing, profound, perfect, deep advice to slash through all the problems of marriage in, in one or two paragraphs. Are you ready? The cardinal principle of Grihasta Ashram is that no one may be the owner of any property or service of another. Everyone is only a servant whose activities are ever in the service of the Lord. Similarly, the sole object of everyone's service as the only master, only friend, only son, and only consort is Krishna. So what is Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur saying here? He's saying when you enter Grihastha Ashram or you enter any ashram, any service, anything, if you think you have a right to enjoy that service, if you have a right to enjoy the people who are serving you, you're totally going to ruin that service. You're going to ruin the relationships. Have we seen this happen? Yes. Uh, someone gets a position, not necessarily a husband, just gets a position of authority, and they begin to think, I have a right, or I have certain privileges or entitlements. You never, ever are not the servant of others. Never. It doesn't matter what position you're in. You're always the servant. You always will be eternally. So we've seen many, many times when a couple gets married, then they start to think they have certain rights, which in this specific, specifically what I'm talking about here, rights which go against the idea or go against the principle that I am servant. And so I am the enjoyer of my spouse. I'm the master of my spouse. I have privileges. I'm entitled because of my position to be served in a specific way. So how does that fit into our philosophy? It does not fit into our philosophy because that is not our philosophy. Like we know that. But so often we get in positions and we forget that because we think this is my position, I have a right to use it. Or I should say misuse it. Or worse, we abuse the position by abusing people in the, in the name that I have a right to abuse. So recently a devotee asked me a question. Uh, a spiritual master was dealing with someone, not his disciple, but someone in a harsh way, in uh, what he considered unkind, inconsiderate, offensive. You get the picture. And so he, he wrote me and he said, does a guru have the right to abuse someone? And, and then I said, of course, nobody has the right to abuse anyone. A spiritual master has the right to instruct his disciple but he will never or should never instruct his disciple in a way that doesn't inspire or help or improve the situation. So sometimes we can instruct because we have the right, because we're the superior, we're, we have the right to co correct, but we do it in a way which becomes problematic. The person does not become inspired. In fact, sometimes the person may give up their devotional service due to our perfectly great instructions, and I'm sure the instructions were perfect and just not appropriate, or not compassionate, or not sympathetic, or not understanding. So to think that I have a right to abuse anyone because of my position is really, is really in, my, in my world, my view, that's insane. We have a right to help people. We have a right to instruct if we're an authority, but never to abuse, never to to demean another person. So they simply become disturbed, upset, discouraged. So all of you, as you grow and mature, you start to become leaders. And you should never think as a leader you are entitled to mistreat anyone. That would be the worst mistake. The worst would not, could be, would be, it is the worst mistake. It happens all the time. Hare Krishna.